Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Ghosts and Spirits video. Alright, let's go ahead and we'll start a whole new series here based on your suggestions. I already kind of started one the other day, but it was merely just a warm-up of some sorts, just taking one of your past suggestions as a nice thank you for your continued viewership. This though will officially start everything. This suggestion is a new one, and it has to do with a ghost that's purportedly seen at one of the most famous signs in the world. Anybody that goes to Los Angeles as a tourist has to go see this sign and of course I'm talking about that Hollywood sign that still to this day remains a destination landmark. It even made some recent news of course with regards to a prankster doing some fudging with some of the letters on that sign. This though ghost story is a little bit of a sad situation because of the circumstances surrounding it and it has to do with the ghost of Peg Entwistle who you're looking at a picture of here who purportedly still haunts this location because of what she did there so pretty sad tragic situation I'll explain everything associated with it so here we go so who was Peg Entwistle well she was a lesser known actress sometime in the 1930s there in Hollywood she was actually born oh, across the sea uh, so she was born in the United Kingdom in Wales specifically in the early 1900s. Her name though, official name, was Millicent Lillian Entwistle, but much like anything involving Hollywood, whenever you go there, they use a lot of pseudonyms, those AKAs. So in this case, she went by the name of Peg Entwistle when it came to her acting career. Her early life though, was still something in terms of a tragedy in of itself. Even when she was just a small child, her mother died uh, early in her years. And then afterward, when she went to live with her father, apparently someone, I uh, don't know if this is correct, but may have been an American because her father at that time was in New York City, cut to a couple of years later, and he was in turn killed by a hit and run accident or if it made it seem like it was like a, a hit and run where the person uh, kind of like just didn't even bother leaving uh, staying in other words so her father died tragically there and so she was essentially uh, parentless going forward um, even then in her late teens she decided she's going to do something with her life and so that's where her acting career came about she first started acting on stage won a couple of roles and then eventually moved on onto various Broadway productions and then entered the acting world there in Hollywood. Um, it was during this time though that there was a little bit of a difficulty with her life because even at the young age of 19 she decided she wanted to marry another actor, someone by the name of Robert Keefe, but if you can believe this, it turns out that he was already married to someone else. Basically he was lying to her during their entire encounter and then also he had a six-year-old son so imagine that there she is struggling actress of some sort and then she finds this guy falls in love with him only to realize that he was basically duping her this whole time so of course they ended up divorcing afterward and then that's when she was back on to the uh, to the task of trying to find more stage work, more film work, more uh, TV work. Um, it was at this point, though, with everything happening in her life, all these tragedies, that the first set of depression came across her. Um, even then, um, she did not necessarily uh, dive into it or t let it take over. Instead, she moved directly to Los Angeles back in 1932. I guess her stance there at that point was go right to this, uh, right to the heart of the action. You know, what better way than to change things and try to make sure that she can elevate her acting career than to be right then and there. And, if, and sure enough, things seem to become a little better. She found more work on stage. And then finally, she appeared in some film called 13 women and this was going to be uh, I guess her big breakout because this was going to be a situation 
where uh, this movie was apparently starring another famous actress so this would absolutely all the attention within this film would spill over to her and this would be uh, her, her breakout role but much like everything else happening in her life at that point all the tragic circumstances there was yet another tragic circumstance with this new movie because shortly before it was supposed to come out there were some reviews done on it beforehand and it made the film considered to be like very poor like the early reviews came out and it was not liked at all so the studio naturally went back and re-edited the film but get this once that re-edit was done pretty much all of Peggy's that was her nickname by the way all of Peggy's uh, actual role was cut on the editing floor. It happens. So like when it comes to the world of Hollywood, anybody that knows the uh, behind the scenes stuff, you could have very large part within the film at the beginning, but then when it comes to the editing floor, it's gone. One of the most famous examples remains that Terrence Malick film, The Thin Red Line, where so many actors were basically cut from the entire film, even though they had large to small roles like you would never see them today in that film because of how they were cut so lo and behold this happened the same way with Peggy again this was supposed to be her breakout role and so afterward she was cut from the film and then the studio that signed her originally because at that time the way actors worked was they were signed on for multiple films so it would not just be one film they would be signed for multiple this studio though that signed her for the 13 women afterward they decided to drop the options on her contract so for all future production in other words so no doubt this was the lowest point in her life because there she was moving to Los Angeles trying to land all these roles taking a more direct approach to it finally getting a breakout role and then through sheer tragic circumstance there it is the role cut and then the studio dropped her all together so cut to September 18 1932 and she was 24 years at the time Peg Entwistle decided that she wanted to do something about it like finally her depression her despair took over she initially told her uncle who she was living with at the time that she was going to go somewhere just to a local drugstore pick up some things I guess there but instead unknown to anyone else of course just herself only she went up to that famous Hollywood sign probably as a ending to her life like a poetic ending thinking that uh, in her case with her her life pursuing so much the world of Hollywood and then having it such within a grasp you know a reachable grasp and then it have it gone she went straight to that Hollywood sign climbed up the non uh, accessible areas because apparently with that sign I've never been there before but apparently with that sign you can't just walk up to it like it's considered um, trespassing when you do so so a lot of things that are cordoned off there but she went across those places went up to the sign went up to the letter H specifically climbed up the uh, stairwell or whatever it was the ladder that's there behind the sign and then right on top of that H which is about 50 foot tall apparently well, what people were stating she jumped from that H and then died upon impact thereafter so basically she committed suicide so tragic ending again to a tragic life altogether now as far as her ghost and what seems to be encounters with it ever since that situation happened ever since she committed suicide there on that Hollywood sign by the way back then it was called Hollywood land if you can believe it like the sign said Hollywood land rather than just Hollywood then people who traveled there report seeing a spirit of a woman roaming the hills in and around that sign and people think it has to do with her with peg and whistle so here are some various documented sightings according to people that have experienced uh, coming across her there at that sign the most common seem to be park rangers because it just seems natural those park rangers are the ones that uh, work within that area they have stated that they see a pretty blonde woman usually dressed in 1930s clothing again matching the timeline that that Peggy was in and there she is wandering the paths associated with the park she's always sad always has like a very uh, depressed face and anytime anyone approaches her like these park rangers 
she instantly just vanishes before them. Not only that, but animals have also been known to encounter her and then, um, um, uh, of course, realize that they're dealing with something different altogether. For example, there was a couple who apparently walked their dog along the trail known as the Beechwood Canyon Trail. And that's when the dog started to behave very strangely. It started to cower in fear, started to whimper. And that's when they saw this woman. They described her as being out of date. In terms of her clothing, it suddenly seemed like she appeared right in front of them. And then she was in a state of being confused, dazed, almost like she doesn't, didn't realize where she was. And when these, uh, when this couple decided, you know, to try to do something and try to help her out, boom, she instantly vanished right before their eyes. By the way, um, there's another park ranger, a guy by the name of John Arbogast, who states it's probably the best time to catch this ghost because by now she's become almost like a landmark of herself when it comes to all the situations that people have seen of her. Um, he states that the best time to try to catch her is A, late at night, and then also when conditions are foggy. And then you'll know that you have her in your presence because you always have that scent of gardenias coming about from your area. So if you're walking around there late at night, maybe it's slightly foggy, and then you start smelling those gardenias, then you're in luck. You're going to be in an, uh, you have a good chance of seeing the ghost of Peggy sometime soon. But the this Cardenia's, by the way, was her favorite scent. So that's a fragrance that she had on uh, when back when she was alive. So that's why um, people state that that is her that people can see thereafter. But yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of all the circumstances. Other similar uh, experiences that happened, but it all seems to be the same thing. And that's where people report seeing someone, a woman with out of date clothing. Uh, they try to contact her and then she disappears. Like uh, either the woman doesn't see them or she does, ignores them, and then just outright disappears as well. But if anybody has any more information tied to uh, this ghost of the Hollywood sign, please post those comments below. That'd be very, very good to hear. Anybody has been there before to the Hollywood sign and encounter anything themselves maybe something even that seems strange seem out of the ordinary not necessarily if you saw the ghost per se but still it, it seemed like it was something unique and strange please uh, I would love to hear those comments by the way if you want to end this video on an even more tragic note shortly after she committed suicide lo and behold there was a letter that was sent to her house in this case somebody from a place called Hollywood Playhouse uh, would must have seen her work uh, shortly before she committed suicide and in this letter it was an offer to be a part in some play and within that play it was going to be her role being a woman who commits suicide so uh, again ironic but very tragic at the same time because had she just not decided to uh, end her life right at that fateful night, then she would have had yet another part ready to go, ready to play. So, all right, everybody. Thanks again, as always. Take care.